Um, this is a tweet I posted. This is about the tournament coming up today. Um, and um, it is not the t- t- today. Of course, is September 11th. Uh, we we never will forget September 11th, 2001. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth, but I just want to show this tweet. So, as some of you know, probably a lot of you don't know, the World Championship match in 1995 was held between Gary Kasparov and Vishinov at the World Trade Center. Um, also, the first game, if I'm not mistaken, of that match was played on September 11th, 1995. Um, and I think there was actually a tweet that alluded to that in here. Like, if I open this image, um, if you look closely, you can't see it clearly. You see it says September 11th to October 13th. So it actually was, um, it was actually 24 years to the day that um, that the match started. Um, the World Championship match was played between Gary Kasparov and Vishwanathan Anand. Um, so, uh, so, so yeah, I would say that. Um, very sad. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so nine eleven ninety five is when the match was. So that was, uh, oh, sorry, twenty five, not twenty four. Sorry, twenty five. September eleven two thousand one is is where I was getting confused. But yeah, anyway, that match was twenty five years ago. What I would also say um, beyond that as well is uh, today being September eleventh, it is my stepfather's birthday. He is sixty nine years old today. So I will, um, I will of course wish him a happy birthday um, down the road. Music is too loud. Uh, I think the music is pretty good. Um, so I will wish him a happy birthday later on. Um, but that's that. So, all right, you guys. Um, I think I think it's good. Um, let me make sure. One second, you guys. Let me just check. It's good to start. Okay. All right, you guys. So, um... Without further ado, then, uh, I am going to be starting a speed run um, today, probably shortly. But before we start the speed run, I just want to um, go over the, one of the games, the only game that I actually went to in 1995 um, in the match between Kasparov and Anand. So in 1995, I was seven years old. I was uh, just a regular kid going to elementary school at, um, I think it was uh, Ridgeway, Ridgeway Elementary School in White Plains, New York. And... Um, and and so I was going I was going to school uh, just an elementary kid I think I was part of the chess club not, nothing too uh, nothing too too special or fancy at any rate but um, yeah so I, so I was so I was going to I was going to school and um, one of the great things is my stepfather being a chess teacher he actually knew um, Michael Kordakovsky some of you know and maybe you don't I'm just giving you guys the background for how how this occurred but uh, Michael Kordakovsky is a, he's a very good friend um, of Gary Kasparov he's been um, he's been a uh, He's been helping Kasparov with Kasparov Chess Foundation, all sorts of stuff for many, many years. They've known each other since way back in the in the uh, Soviet Union times. So my stepfather knew him, and through him, we were able to actually um, we, we 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 were told we could go to one of the games. It was my brother, myself, and I think one of the other one of the other kids who was who was a chess player as well, part of the chess team, and um, and so we were originally supposed to go to game nine. We were supposed to go to game nine of this match between Kasparov and Anand. I remember this very clearly. Um, First eight games of that match were drawn. Anand won game nine. Kasparov played this game ten, which I will show you, which he won to, to win it. Oh, come on, start the match. Dude, chill out. What why are you guys being why are you guys being so antsy today? Relax. Take some deep breaths and calm down. Um Jeez. So anyway, you guys. Um as, as, as I was saying, um we were supposed to go to game nine and um and then uh and, and then for whatever reason, I know it was scheduling, whatever, we didn't end up going to game nine, but we did go to uh, game 10. So as I said, first eight games were draw, game nine, and on one, and now we'll start taking a look at this game 10, which basically changed the fortunes of the match because um, at this point with Kasparov down, down one game, he had to win with White. So this was game 10. Uh, they played this open Spanish, which I believe they had played before, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, let me change the screen. Wrong one. Um, so yeah, so they played they they played the open Spanish. Uh, let me turn the music down one smidgen. There we go. Okay, so they played this open Spanish. As you guys know, uh, the Spanish was an opening that Kaspar played a lot in his World Championship matches. He also played the Scotch Gambit as well in some of the early earlier matches against Anatoly Karpov. So a six was played. Bishop a four. Knight f six castles. Knight takes e four. D four. B five. Um, this line, by the way, is still very prominent. Uh, in modern day chess, the open Spanish is played a lot by Anish Giri and um, Fabiano Caruana. I had this against Magnus Carlsen in our match um, the other month as well. So it's 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 an opening that's been played. It's an opening variation that's been played a lot. Um, okay, so Bishop e6, Knight bd2, Knight c5, c3. This is a Rui Lopez, not the Spanish. Rui Lopez, Spanish, same thing. Um, but both players have played it. Did when did I when did I recall this? Did I look it up recently or from memory? You mean the game? 
I mean, I have the notation here, so I load the PGM, but um, I remember this game very well because there was a critical moment in this game after pawn to um, d4. Now, to give you to, to talk about modern day chess, in modern day chess, white almost always plays this move, bishop c2, um, and black plays d3, bishop b1. I've had this position with both the white side and the black side in various games. Um, I think in Sham Kir in Azerbaijan in 2014, I had this on the black side against Fabiano Caruana. Um, I think I also had this against the Azerbaijani Grandmaster Eltai, Eltai Sfarli in a World Cup game as well. So I played the Open Spanish quite a bit with black. Now, what's what's worth noting about this and what makes chess so difficult is that um, the move that was played in this game was knight to g5, which it, it is still a move, but after knight to g5, it's been worked out to where black can guaranteed get a force draw if he wants to. Um, so that's why in modern day chess now, everybody plays the move bishop to c2, because after knight g5... <clears throat> There are a couple ways that black can play um, to make a draw, but there are there are there are forced drawing lines here. Um, so so nowadays everybody plays bishop to c2. But at the time, this was this was in the late 90s. Computers were just getting going; they were not as good as humans. So a lot of the preparation was done by the trainers of the players. Um, and the, this idea of knight g5, I believe it's a combination. I think it was an original idea of the, of the wizard. From Riga, if I'm not mistaken, um, Mikhail Tal. I think also one of Karpov's, um, one of Karpov's uh, seconds, Igor Zaitsev, also suggested this line as well um, before. So this knight g5 move is a brilliant move. It's an original move that Kasparov played, and I, I remember this very well because when, when I was there, um, the layout was was as follows. So normally, when you guys think about modern day chess, you think, okay, everybody's in there, like everybody's in like a. a like everybody's in a concert hall or something like that and um they're in a concert hall or something everybody sees you straight on but at the world championship match it was a little bit different so the way it worked was they actually i think they i don't know if they constructed the, gla the glass room or how they did it but they because Robin and on were in a separate room with glass around but you could see in like you could see in so it's like it was on the 107th floor i believe i i don't i remember the floor is exactly how it goes um uh yeah, you guys say, wait, why doesn't queen takes g5 work? That's a move too. And I'll get into all this stuff, don't worry. But um, it's just, just give me a second. Um, so, so yeah, the, the the match was um, they they were in like the behind this glass. So like it would be like if if I'm where I'm at right now, but there's glass in front. I'm sitting in a room thinking. But at the meantime, there were like there was analysis. There was analysis. There were a lot of like concession cells and and all sorts of stuff. So it was a very it was a very um, unique setup, and it was a lot of fun to be there because. Um, as a, as a kid, it's just like you 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 go you go you go go and watch this match and and this match not not this match but this game really was one of those early experiences I had in chess where um I'm setting the stage yeah one of these early experiences with chess where it's like wow this is really really cool it's really this is really amazing like I I, I want to play this game I want to get good at this game um so um. So, so it's just a very unique setup that they had there. And, and I would say out of all the events that I've been to in my entire life, it's probably, it probably is the mo most unique one that I've been to. Um, and, and, and one that, the one that had the most of a, of a wow factor. I mean, mind you, I was seven years old, so it was a little bit different, but still. So anyway, let's keep going with the game. So there's this knight g5 move, very original move. Um, as I said, nowadays it's known to be a draw based on certain games like Kasparov versus Shirov and so forth. But queen g5 is actually not a good move because white can go queen to f3. And now you put pressure on the knight and the rook on the diagonal. And black can't go back here because there's probably... Um, I think you just capture and play like knight e4 or you take. I mean, everything is really, really loose. You have forks with the knights. Bishop is coming to g5 as well here. Um... So it's completely, completely winning for white. So it's a very deep concept behind which the moves are not obvious. Um, what I do believe is I, <clears throat> based on based on what I vaguely recall from being there, is that um, is that Anon I think had maybe looked at this, but I think I think Anon had prepared this. I think he was still moving instantly. Um, they were both in preparation where he played uh, takes knight e six takes queen d three bishop c two takes, and this I believe was where the game really really. Ch really sort of spun out of control because there was this original move that that Kasparov played here which was um knight to b3 streaming before playing streaming before playing hmm impressive well the thing is this is 960 chess so there isn't really you can't really do preparation the same way <clears throat> so it's it's a little bit different um in, in general terms so um all right so so let's keep going 
So, so Anand was still moving instantly. As I said, Queen G5 is not a good move. Um, well, I guess it, it's an okay move now. Like nowadays, it's known that this line is draw, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys why this is a draw. So the reason this is a draw is because Black is a very powerful, um, Black is a very powerful counter sacrifice. So, so, so the way the line normally goes, I believe, is um, how does it go? There, there, there's um, there is a way that how does Black sack back? trying to remember this line because now i'm not remembering it right off um there's some there's some way for black to sacrifice the piece back is it knight of three yeah i don't remember there's a, there's a game kasparov versus Shirov. i don't remember the sequence but it is a uh it, it is a force draw so anyway let's 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 go back with the to the game so takes i don't remember a game wtf yeah i just i i don't remember how it goes um sorry Oh no no no! It's B four. Sorry, it's B four. Sorry. Okay, no no no. I do. I think I do remember now. Sorry, I think I do remember. Okay, so I think the way the line goes is this: it's this, this B four takes knight f three, queen d five takes, 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 takes d four, a four, and this is a this is the line. I think is it a four? Is it c six first? Maybe I'm wrong. There's some way. It's something like this. I don't remember the exact order of this, or maybe it's. Somehow you get to this position. Sorry. Somehow, somehow you get to this position. I believe it's it's something like this. There was a game Kasparov versus Shirov that was played in Lenares, and um, maybe I'm slightly wrong on the order of the moves, but it's it's a four straw. Um, I could look it up if if you guys really want me to be be technical about it. I mean, I'll I'll I'll, um, I'll, I'll find it. Just give me one second. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. What is Hikaru doing? He already sacrificed a piece. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, I don't see it right off, so so I'll pull it up later. But it was a game in Lenars, which where Black did a recounter, Black sack a piece back and gets two central pawns. Um, and the game I remember was um, the game Gary won the game, but it should have been a draw. I'm not losing my memory. I just haven't studied this line in eons because it's no longer relevant. Anyway, okay, let's keep going to the game. So DC3 takes Queen D3, Bishop C2, Queen C3. And this was, I believe, was still a nod's preparation. And this is where Kasparov uncorked his big novelty, which was knight to b3. Now Magnus will prepare this line. In barracks, it doesn't actually work that way because if I I don't play the open Spanish very frequently with the black pieces. And um, with the white pieces, I don't play this line either. This is the point, is that knight g5 has been essentially refuted. So um, I, I would never play the open Spanish with black. And if I had white and it was an open Spanish, I would go bishop c2 or play a line like I did last time against Magnus, um, which is different. So it doesn't actually apply in that same way. But, but, good, but good good point. Okay, so anyway, queen c3, knight b3, very, very original move by Kaspara. Basically, white decides to sacrifice a rook in exchange for a lot of quick play on the diagonals with the queen and the two bishops here towards the black king. Maybe refute is too strong of a word, but it's it black can force a draw if he knows what he's doing. So knight b3, bishop takes b3, very strong move here. And bishop plays knight to d4 here. It's worth noting that queen to a1 here, um, I believe, is losing by force because of queen h5, g6, and I think it was queen f3, if I remember correctly, hitting the knight. And there's also queen f6 hitting the rook on h8 here. Um... I won't go with the Spanish because you aren't half as good as a nun or Kasparov. <sighs> you guys, I, I play the Spanish. I play the Vladimir Kramnik approach. I play the Berlin defense. I don't play the open Spanish. But thank you so much, man. Just calm down. Relax. Deep breaths. Relax, you guys. Um. So, so yeah, anyway, uh, the, the Berlin Wall, yeah. So, so I believe queen h5, g6, queen f3 is winning because the problem is that black can't really defend everything here. You're hitting the knight and the rook on this diagonal. You also have queen f6 to hit this. The king is stuck in the center, and you see, look at all these active pieces. White has four active pieces, four active pieces that are coming into the game, and black has one piece, one piece on a1 that's good. So, um, so knight d4 is played here, and now queen g4 is played by Kasparov here. 
queen a1 bishop takes e6 another great move by the way like pure brilliance by gary this was all prepped to be clear up to i think it was up to this point was all preparation for kasparov um i i don't remember exactly um what game is this this is game number 10 from the 1995 world championship match between gary kasparov and vishwanath and anon it was the only game during that match that i went to uh, the match was held at the World Trade Center um, in New York City. Obviously, with this being September 11th as well, um, I thought it was kind of notable to start 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 out with something of this nature. Um, yeah, yeah, like it's it was it was one of the the most memorable matches I think for everybody because um, I, I thought this game was just yeah. Uh, no, you guys, the match was held in 1995. Um, but yeah, again, never forget. Um, I'll talk more about 9/11 after this. Um, but yeah, it, the the match also to be clear, you guys, the match started 25 years ago to the day. The first first game of the World Championship match in 1995 at the World Trade Center was it happened on September 11th, 1995. Um, so yeah, so Bishop E6 has played here. Rook A D8 played by Anand. I mean, that's quarter century ago, crazy. Um, and now Bishop to H6, very nice move here, played by um, played by Kasparov at this point. And the idea is that basically you create the fossil on the queen with the rook hitting the queen. And if the queen moves, what white can do is white can take the pawn. And if you take the pawn, take the bishop back, white has a beautiful queen h5 check, king e7, queen f7 with checkmate, bishop guards the queen, and this pawn covers all the critical squares that the king can run to. So um, really, really brilliant idea by Kasparov playing bishop h6. Um, uh, and here Anon played queen, queen c3. I, I think... I think um, Modern day computers show that queen b2 is supposed to be a better move. Again, very hard to play this correctly. Um, but the reason I think queen b2 is better is because what happens is that after bishop takes pawn, you can go queen to e2, preventing this queen h5 check. And when white takes after black trades, I think black has time to start running the pawn down the board. And I suspect it's still winning for white, especially based on the valuation I see up here on the top. But it's not as easy to play. And you'll see what the difference is in a second. So... The reason this is not 100% clear is because the c-pawn is running down the board very quickly for black. Um, and if we go back to this position after queen to c3 here, uh, bishop g7, queen d3, it looks very similar because when white checks, white checks on h5, black and block. But the big difference here between the game is that when white takes and black goes here, uh, Gary correctly plays bishop f6, brings the bishop back, hit, hitting the rook. He covers the other square with the bishops. Um, uh, black goes here. They trade black takes the the reason that Gary won this game is because in this position there is an all star move that essentially leads to a technically forcing win, which is the move rook to c1. And I alluded to this line during the very famous uh, Pog Champs game between Cutie Cinderella and Scissors. Um, and and the reason this is winning is because let's just play a random move like g3 c5. If black gets these pawns rolling, he has two connected past pawns potentially on the queen side of the board that are going down. Um, and the c-pawn is going to be really, really dangerous once it gets rolling. Um, so um, so the reason that this is winning is because of rook c1. And now the pawn never gets to start rolling. The rook covers this critical square. So now the pawn can go to c6 and it's guarded, but you can't run the pawn up the board. The tournament starts in, um, it will be starting in, I believe, three and a half hours. So the point, the reason Gary wins here is because black can't make uh, use of the three three connected pawns here as quickly as he would have if the pawn was on c5 or c4. Um, so now let's go back to the other line. So this, this is why I bring up the game. So if we go back to the, this line with queen b2, bishop g7, queen here, the, the, the reason that this is different is because now you'll see the pawn gets rolling. You don't get to go rook c1 and stop the pawn. The black pawn is already rolling up the board very quickly. Now, mind you, with correct play, I suspect this still would be winning. Um, and I think Kasparov might have still won this game anyway, especially with the two pawns in the center rolling up the board. Um, so I, I don't know for sure what would have happened, but this would have been a better try. Now, mind you, to be to be fair, um, the, in no way am I being critical of Anon because this was 95. He was under an extreme amount of pressure. He'd come off a win in game nine with the white pieces to take the lead in the match. So he obviously was feeling a lot of pressure here. So... Um, so he goes queen c3, like I said, takes queen d3. Same concept of bringing the queen back. Kasparov plays this, this great line, queen g4. Uh, actually, not Kasparov, sorry. It's worth noting that if a non takes here, you have queen h4 check. You hit the king and the rook. If black takes, you take the rook on d8 and win. And if black goes king e8, now you go bishop g4. You cover the critical squares, and you also have bishop h5 to hit the uh, 
queen and the king. So now takes is played, rook c1 is played here. Um, Anon plays c6, and now Gary goes pawn to f4 here. Idea to start rolling the pawn. So the reason that this leads to the winning winning position is because you see white has a four on one here. You have a connect four potentially. Like let me just make a let me just make a move. You get the connect four here. So you have four pawns. Black has one. So you have a four v one on this side of the board. Black has a three v one on this side of the board potentially. But the problem is the four v one is much quicker, especially with the pawns being very far advanced for white. And secondly, black can't get the c pawn rolling. So even if he gets these pawns rolling, he still he needs all three to march them down the board. Um, whereas you can't quite do it with only two. So, so Gary goes f4, a5 is played by Anon, Gary plays king f2, another fantastic move, realizing that again, white can, black, black can push the pawns up the board and create one pass pawn, but unless you can push this pawn and support this knight on c5 with c5, white's going to bring the king here, harass the knight, and the rook is kind of glued to the knight, the rook can't ever go away um, to attack, whoa, is, is this an actual, is, wait, actually wait, is this a real raid or not, is this a real raid, wait a second, is this a real raid or not? I it's not a real raid, is it? It's not. Okay, well at least at least I at least I only saw at least I at least I only saw it once. Okay, at least it only took me one time of going wow, and then I realized. Um Okay, well that's that's a problem that happened yesterday too. Um Alright, um Yeah, that's frustrating. Whatever. Anyway, let's keep going with the game. Let's let's not let's not get off off the top. This happened yesterday too. I, I mean, maybe I should send an email to Twitch. I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe I need to change my settings. Send an email to Twitch. Not sure. Anyway, um, that that's that. So anyway, King F two is played here. Um, A four is played by Anon. King E three is played by Kasparov here. Um, hitting the knight on um. Hitting the knight on d4 here. And now the problem is that, again, black really would like the pawn on c5. Because if the pawn's on c5, it guards the knight, and you can start just pushing the pawns using your rook elsewhere. But in this case, you can't because your knight is really stuck here on... Um, your, 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 your knight is uh, your, your knight is stuck here on d4. And even if you push the pawn, white can go rook c4. And what happens is you kind of remove all the threats here because now the knight and pawn are both under attack. Or wait, no, sorry, no, rook c4 actually is no good, sorry. Rook c4 is actually bad. So Kasparov, Kasparov using a lot of time understood because if you go rook here, black can go a3, which is pretty pretty nasty. Because now if you take the pawn, you get your king and your rook forked. Um, and if you take the knight, then takes king before b3. And black actually wins here. Because if you take black, passes and makes a queen. If you go back, black takes the pawn and makes another queen because you can't get your king back to um, the a1 square. And the, the double juicers here create a tower of power and, and you make a you make a queen. GM lull yeah so Gary actually correctly plays bishop d1 and by the way this shows how amazing like just going through this game look at this bishop d1 best move plus 2.3 shows just how good um how good Gary was uh because bishop d1 wow best move best move good stuff good stuff from Gary um how good he was was quote unquote was okay yeah was okay all right Anyway, Bishop D1, uh, real, really good move by Kasparov. Fantastic move because now black is B3. You just take, or you take, black takes. And I think you go Rook B1, right? And the problem is black can't bring the Rook back to guard because then you lose the Knight. So you can't really protect the pawn here um, uh, because because you just you, you just can't. And if you lose the pawn on B3, then white just up two pawns. And with the 4V1 on this side, it's always winning. So bishop d1, fantastic move. A3 played here by Anon. G4, again, white wants to start rolling the pawns now. You, you got to use these four, this 4v1 here because now black's pawns are fixed. So um, black can try to play like b3 at some point. But again, the problem is that essentially this knight is stuck. You can't get the pawn here to protect and then use your rook elsewhere. Um, why not take and then a3? Well, if you take and go a3, white just goes rook a1 here. And now the rook stops the pawn. Again, you have the issue with the knight being stuck here. You'd like to bring the rook, but then you lose the knight. Um, so a 4v1 easy clutch. Yeah, I mean, basically, the, the this game comes down to a couple of things. But at this point, white just has to stop the pawns. If white can stop the pawn mass here, the 3v1 
on the queen side, then eventually long term you're always going to be winning with the four versus one on the king side. Um, you could go knight b5, yeah, that's fine too. Um, but then white goes bishop e2 to hit the knight and remove the defender of the pawn on a3. Couldn't Anon bring the king to protect the knight? Um, not easily. He could have tried, I get. I mean, he can't do it here because he needs the king up here. So he would have to have tried to do something like around here, um, like with king e6. But if you go king e6, white just goes king e4, stops the king, and now I'm just going to push my pawns and create a connect three. And the long term, this is just losing for black. And you can't push the pawn to protect the knight either because then white just takes the pawn. Um, so that, that's actually that's why this game is so amazing is essentially and the reason Anand Um not 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 right not right now. Um not not right now. Uh but this is why when I talk about the game, like it's crazy. Think about this game. Imagine if Anand had somehow foreseen this game, he would have been been able to understand that he should have gone Queen B2 and queen e2 and play this line where he gets the active pawn but because he played this other order the reason he lost this game was because of this one move this one rook move is the reason that this one brilliant rook move by kasparov is the reason he won the game um i, I mean beyond the prep but the thing is even after the prep and he got the big edge just one this one all-star move rook c1 um just just ended the game in a sense um i can watch it later just not right now you guys sorry um but this one rook c1 move ended the game, which is why the other day when I was going over pog champs, there was a, it wasn't quite the same thing, but black had like a pawn instead of a knight in that game between scissors and cutie Cinderella. And um, scissors played a rook c1 move, which is the same thing. Cutie had like a pass pawn she wanted to use, but it stopped, but the, she couldn't get the c pawn rolling because scissors put the rook on the c file. So um, yeah, it's just uh, incredible. Incredible game from Kasparov throughout. So anyway, we keep going. Rook d5. So so actually, Vichy plays Rook d5 idea to play c5 and play b3 here. Um, Scissors is Kasparov. Actually, I think Scissors is still alive. Isn't he, isn't he playing Among Us with Hafu? Um, comparing Scissors to Kasparov, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, I'm sure I'm sure Jack would be deeply honored that I'm cons comparing him to uh, to Kasparov. Um. So rook c4 now played by Kasparov. Um, the idea again, put pressure on the pawn and the knight. If black goes c5, now you can play. Is it bishop a4 or king e4? I guess you no, actually it's just king e4 is quite simple. And um and basically the thing is the rook's under attack, and if you move the rook, you lose the pawn. And if you bring the king up, I check, and then you you lose your rook. So basically you end up losing a pawn or you end up losing a rook here at this point. Um so rook c4, rook c5. Or no, sorry, this was played. Sorry, Anon did play c5. Sorry, he did play c5. My bad. Um, so so Kasparov plays king e4. He goes rook d8, and now rook takes c5 is played here. Um, uh, the same scissors who didn't see the free queen. Yes, exactly. Uh, and now knight e6 is played here. Again, Vichy tries to create some counterplay, maybe like rook d4, um, and try to win this win this pawn at f4 with the knight and the rook, potentially. Uh, how many minutes did they get for this match? I believe this was a slow time control. I think they had... Two hours for the first 40 moves, and I think they probably had one hour for the next 20 moves. I think it was the game in 30 minutes, so the game could have gone seven hours um, total. I'm pretty sure it was seven hours, but I could be wrong on that. Holy cow. Holy cow, yeah. So Gary goes rook d5, Anon plays rook c8. He doesn't trade and play this because king c4. Now white collects the two pawns. He still has three pawns, like something like this, 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 this. And white is winning because with two pawns here... You can bring the king and, and basically use the king, and the knight can't knight can't cover both corners from f4. Imagine you play Magnus for seven hours. Yeah, I had a very painful game against him uh, in London. I think it was 2017. We played like an eight-hour game. Um, uh, we played an eight-hour game. Uh, it was this two bishops versus knight endings. I think it was 2016. Unfortunately, like at the very end when I had five, when we both had like five minutes, Magnus made some kind of mistake. He was technically winning and he made a mistake, but then I. Then with like three minutes on the clock, I didn't find the right move and I, I, I lost the game, unfortunately. But yeah, it was like an eight-hour game. It was insane. Um, Sag, yeah. Well, t I mean, not that it's an excuse, but oddly enough, at the time I didn't realize this, but I was, but I already had um pretty bad pneumonia um when I was playing this game. So not that that's an excuse for losing, but I, but um but that 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 I think also played some kind of a small role unfortunately because i don't think i've talked about this in depth um 
But yeah, that tournament in London, I think it was 2016. It was it was after I it was uh, it was before the candidates. No, it would have been candidates I played in was 2016, right? So it would have been 2015 London London Chess Classic. Yeah, London Chess Classic 2015. And um, so I, I went to St. Louis like a week before that tournament, and um, and I played this match against Fabiano. I remember like it was a day or two days before I left for the event. Um, and I got really sick. Like I just started, my throat started hurting. I, I, I mean, it wasn't like I was dying or anything, but I had like this, this really bad, like a uh, throat, uh, throat issue. I was clearing all the time. And um, so I played that match and then, and then like maybe a few days later I went to London and it, it continued. And, um, and I was like, I just, I couldn't, couldn't shake it. So it's like, I was drinking, um, like all sorts of like ginger tea, all these different things. And then, and then, um, it just kept getting worse. And, uh, I think maybe it was, a, it was like a week after I came back from London, I just went to, I went to go see a doctor and, um, and, and yeah, I had really, really bad pneumonia. So, um, yeah, but that's, that's a, that's a, that's a side note that doesn't really matter. Um, did I survive? Well, I am here today, so I think I survived. But anyway, the, the point being that, yeah, eight-hour games do occur. I've had a couple of eight-hour games. I had a game against uh, Georg Meyer, the German Grandmaster, who's also a streamer from time to time. Um, and I had a game against him that went about eight and a half hours. I think we started the game at like three o'clock. Maybe it was earlier, three o'clock in Germany, in, in Dortmund. And, um, and, uh, and then I think like the game ended at like 11 or something, or it was something insane. And by the time the game ended, because Dortmund is such a sleepy city, there was nothing open. There was no food. There was like no food to eat. Like every restaurant was closed. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know why. Maybe it's just Dortmund, but every every restaurant was closed. So it was like literally, I couldn't eat. I, I don't even remember what we did, um, what I did for food. But yeah. So yeah. So um, yeah. All right. Um. So so yeah. So anyway, let's get back to the game. Rook d five. Rook c eight. F5 played here, um, rook c4, king e3, knight c5. Anand is down two pawns here, but he correctly understands the only chance to try and get back in the game is to use the a pawn. Only hope. Even though he's down two pawns in the center, if he can make a queen with one of these two two pawns down here, he has a chance to do something. Um, so g5, rook c1, and now Gary plays rook d6. An absolutely classy move. Let's see, is it the best move? Man, look at this move. Rook, I guess f6 is technically better technically better but um but rook d6 is also a fantastic move the point being that after b3 you just go f6 if king f7 there's bishop to h5 check hitting the king king can come king cannot come up here because the rook covers a square you have to go back and then rook f8 or rook d8 sorry it's just checkmate pawns squares are covered and um and that's just ggs because the king is stuck on f8 so um so at this point, after after Rook D6, Anand resigned the game here, and with that, Kasparov took a one or not took a lead. Sorry, he even the match at I believe that would have been five five because first the games were drawn, so it would have made it four four, and then Anand won to take a five four lead in game nine, and then Kasparov won game ten to even up the match um, at five at five all. So um, I just thought I would I thought I would do some light analysis of this game to show you guys the game because it was the one game of that match I went to. Um, uh, great game. I couldn't watch this unfold over seven hours. So, well, I mean, that's kind of the issue with, with chess. I mean, not even chess, but I think sports in general. It's like, if, if I think about baseball, in baseball, they have, what is it, 20? I think it's 20 seconds right now. I, I think it's like 20 seconds the pitcher has when he has to he has to throw the next pitch. Maybe it's 30. Um, but, yeah. Was I happy that day? I was, yeah. So, it's like everything is speeding up for sure. But the problem is, like, games like this, I would argue... On some level, you could watch it because it was very exciting, very tense. But modern day chess, with 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 computers and technology, you have more and more draws. So you'll still have exciting games with chess, but the majority of games are going to be a draw. So if you have like, if you have ten draws, but you have one exciting game, I mean, it's not a balance that a lot of spectators or fans are going to want to watch. They just aren't. So um, cricket is a week long. That used to be true, but now cricket you have test you have test cricket, right? Which is you, you have test cricket, which is completely different. Um, so so yeah. Anyway, uh, so so yeah. I mean, great game, fantastic. I mean, I remember this very well. Just because I was there. It was it was amazing as a seven year old. Because um, I remember on that day it was actually cloudy. It was like we were. We, I was up there looking out, looking out one of those windows, and we were we were above. We we were like we were above the clouds. It's like you couldn't you couldn't see down. You could you looked out and all you saw was uh you saw clouds. Um so yeah, that was uh 
uh, amazing, amazing experience. It's it's probably even as I think about it now, even though I was very young, probably the best chess experience that I've had. Um, above the clouds, yeah, above the clouds.